Peace, family, and welcome to another episode of Growing Your Own Food. Today, I want to focus on another wild edible plant that I've always seen all the time and pretty much everybody's seen all the time. And um, just from reading this book, you know, just, just finding out all about all the wild edibles that you can eat and their benefits is just so amazing. So um, I've taken the time to gather information and um, read some information from here just so you can get a gist of how beneficial this plant is. So this plant, this, this plant, <laughs> the plant today we're focusing on is called Spanish needle. So Spanish needles, scientific name, Biden's album, parts of the plant to eat is the leaves and flowers. However, through further research, I found that the entire plant is edible. When to gather them year round, where to gather them, disturbed sites throughout Florida. However, this plant is native to all of the Americas, north and south. And they even speak about it in Hindu cultures, and the Chinese know about it as well. So I'm going to say India and China are very familiar with this plant as well too. Spanish needles have a ray of needles with hooked ends that attach to anything passing by. Your pants, your socks, dog's fur. It'll even prickle like a needle if your socks are thin. It's one of the weeds homeowners try the hardest to eradicate, but it's also a wonderful edible green. Spanish needles is sometimes called beggar's tick, but I think the name should be reserved for a non-native pest plant called Caesarwood, whose round, flat little seeds look more like ticks. Pin to stick to socks or fur just as readily as Spanish needles. The botanical name of Spanish needles is Biden's Alba. And also through further research, I also found that it's, it's, it's um, Biden's Alba and Biden's Pelosa. And that's P-I-L-O-S-A. Biden's come from two Latin words, which means, which um, I'm sorry, by, which means two, and dens, which means teeth. It refers to the seeds, which are about half an inch long, with two prongs on the end. The teeth that grab your socks, alba, refers to the white petals. Biden's alba is another of the plants that is easier to learn to identify when it is tall and in bloom. Most gardeners are well acquainted with these yellow and white flowers, but they are never knew, but I'm sorry, but they never knew they could be eaten. Spanish needles is prolific if left to its own devices. When you've learned the characteristics of the leaves, you can find them when they are young, tender, and tasty. Often you can find young sprouts along older plants in bloom. You can use Spanish needles in many ways. When you're learning to identify it, you can strip the smaller leaves from the stiff stem and cook them in a few changes of water to get rid of some of the bitterness. Try mixing some of the other greens that require cooking. Add some bacon bits or hard cooked eggs, top them with cheese, chop them well, and add them to scrambled eggs. Try using them in a quiche instead of spinach. The young leaves can be added to a salad or cooked raw lightly in a spinach. The small white yellow blooms can be thrown into a salad for a bit of edible color. The young leaves can be added to a salad raw or cooked lightly with spinach. The white small leaves blossom can be thrown into a salad for a bit of edible color as my friend Dick Drury says, if you don't like the weeds in your yard, eat them. Here's something else I've add. I've been told about Spanish needles will remove prickly pear cactus's pain gallish, gallish, from your skin if you crush the leaves in water and soak them in your hand. I've heard that the boat builders, after working with fiberglass, get relief from its irritation by taking a bath in Spanish needle water, right? So let's go identify some Spanish needle. And also, let me read you some extra tidbits that um, I did some you know, extended research on Spanish needle, right? So, Spanish needle, also known as Biden's Pelosa, known in the Americas and tropical and subtropical areas. Other names for Spanish needle is called needle grass, 
broomstick, beggar's tick, demon spike grass, and blackjack. So this is Spanish needle, you guys. This plant. This, everybody knows this. Um, we call them hitchhikers because of these little things. I mean, they will get all over you. I'm trying to get this in a little bit better focus, right? So you can see. So this is Spanish needle, you guys. You've seen it everywhere, right? Let's see here. You can um, eat this raw with salad, right? You can boil it. You can cook it with callaloo and spinach. You can make it as an herbal tea. You can crush fresh leaves from this plant to speed up blood clotting if you have a wound, right? It has anti-inflammatory properties, antibacterial properties, antiseptic properties, antimicrobial properties, and anti-diuretic properties. It is a diuretic. It was used in other cultures to treat malaria. You can use it as a natural mouthwash. It's beneficial in treating joint pain, discomfort, swelling, colic, stomach ailments, along with infections, including cold and flu, liver diseases and infections, urinary tract infections, upper respiratory tract infections, venereal diseases, conjunctivitis, this can you use for conjunctivitis, um, and ear aches. And um, also, the um, if you are pregnant or breastfeeding, you would want to consult with a doctor or avoid this plant. Um, consult with you, you know, your, if you have a doctor or a doula, or midwife, or whomever, you want to consult with them before taking this plant. And let's find some young Spanish needle, right? When it doesn't have the flowers, right? Like, okay, so let's try to find some young ones. So this is like their leaves. This is how their leaves look, right? Oh, sorry. Again. So this is how their little leaves look, right? So kind of like something like this. So we want to take a piece and kind of walk around and see if we can identify other plants. So we know that that's not it. However, there's more here. Okay, this is Spanish needle. Let's walk around. I mean, it's so it's it is very prolific everywhere. See, we have more Spanish needle here. Get a better angle on that. It's a little younger, but that's still it. You know, it doesn't look as you know as big as this one. But that is it. Oh, and here are some even some younger Spanish needles that don't have any yellow flowers on them. Let me just you know, take it and compare them so we can make sure that we are identifying the proper plant. And yeah. And here is even some more Spanish needle here. And look, even some of the little blossoms are trying to come in. So yeah, I want to show you how to identify these, what they look like, all the benefits, and what you can kind of use them for. I don't think I covered every single last benefit. However, I think I put enough information together so that you can continue your research. So family, until the next time, peace.